All right, well, I've had the Tsugami running all day. I'm gonna set it up to run overnight and I'm gonna kind of go through that and show you how I set it up to run overnight. Before that, I wanna show you this thing that I added on just today, actually. Usually these parts drop right on that plastic piece into this pan, but that can only hold so many parts. So what I did instead is I got a plastic five gallon bucket and some square tubing that slides right over that plastic piece and it's angled down towards the bucket and it has that black piece on there so it'll kick it vertically into the bucket. And then in the bottom of that bucket, so you know the oil is still filtered out, I found these little things on Amazon and they're like 10 bucks a piece, but there's a bunch of little cones and they have holes in the bottom. So all that oil will still drop to the bottom of the bucket and get filtered out. I guess the real advantage here is that like in that tray, that's only about two gallons. So obviously I'm getting two X the amount of parts I can hold just in that bucket versus, versus that tray. For me, that puts these parts running at eight hours to now I can run all the way up at 20 hours. Now, obviously that, that bucket would be completely heaped up, but it gives me a 2X boost. And so now I can set this up to run overnight even earlier in the day. So coming over to the machine, the first thing I'm gonna do is set my count. So I'm gonna hit the custom graph key it might say menu right here instead of what this is here, but if you hit menu, then it'll go into this. And then I'm gonna arrow over uh, twice until I see parts. And then there, I already have this set. So this is set to run until the next morning. But what I usually do is look at the volume that I have and calculate how many parts I'm running an hour, you know, for so many hours until, until I'll be here or until, I, until the bucket will fill up. So I have that set. And all you have to do there is you, know, you type in your number and then you have preset or count. The input key will not work on this screen. And after my count is set, I hit the offset key. And then I'm going to arrow over to the operator panel. And then I'm going to page down just once until I see PW off. So what this does, I'm gonna head and turn that on and you'll see this little light on up here come on. So what this does is if there's any error that comes up on the machine that stops the process, that power off will trigger and it'll wait for about 60 seconds and then it'll kick off the NC control and the entire machine itself, which in turn turns off the bar feeder as well. I guess the point of that is, is so if anything happens that stops the process, the machine turns off instead of runs all night when it doesn't need to be. So with that done, I usually just go back to the custom graph key and I set it on this uh, part count screen. I have this bar feeder set up already, but I guess one thing that I'm going to make sure I have right is I'm going to hit the parameter button and I'm going to make sure that my set length for the bar change and the length of the Toyo stock is set correct in there. I guess I could explain these two parameters too. This parameter right here, the end of bar, is how far the bar feeder will go up until it comes up with the bar chain signal to the machine. The next one is how much material is used for every part. This, the only purpose of this for me, because I don't have a feeding check set, is just so I can see a better count of how many pieces I have left in the bar. The next thing I do for overnight runs is I come over to the chip conveyor and I make sure that my air knife is plugged in. So you can see my red hose, it's running to air pressure. And I have it set around 20 PSI. I think it's good enough just to blow chips off, but essentially what's going on here is there's that tube right there blows over a metal uh, knife that's here just to make sure that it doesn't, like this is happening right here, but if I had this off, there would be a lot more. So from here, I'd be ready to run overnight and I would just start the machine, make sure my parts are running good, and then I'd leave. But kind of to show more about what that power off function does and show how to turn the machine back on from there, I'm going to lower my part count and let it run out and then show what the machine does and how to get it back up and going. 
So here I'm going to set my preset to just one more part. So I'm going to go to 46, 86. You can see it there. I'm going to hit preset. So it has one part left. And power off is on. So we're going to go run that part. So we're going to pick off right now. Part will that program in. All right, so the program is stopped. Our work counter came up and you can see that the power off light and the red light are flashing. So they're gonna flash for a couple more seconds until 60 seconds is reached and you'll hear the machine power off. So there the machine kicked off. It also kicked off the air on the chip conveyor and it turned off the bar feeder as well. So we're gonna go around to the back. This is what it would look like in the morning if a part count, you know, ran out or something, ran all of its parts. So if you're coming around the back, you'll see it's in trip mode, which it does look like something bad happened, but this is just how it uh, turns the machine off. So we're gonna go off and then go all the way to reset and then turn that back on. Coming back around to the front, I'm just gonna hit the power on button. Now, when the screen comes back on, with a part count, I don't think it will turn back off, but if there is an error, say the chip conveyor got you know clogged up and the chip conveyor limited out, then that error will still be up and you'll have 60 seconds again to turn that function back off. So you'll have, that'll be the first place I go is to turn that function back off. So you can see it flashing. It would turn off because there's a bar feeder alarm. Sometimes this just happens. So I'm gonna to go to the offset and then air over to the operator panel. Page down to the power off and I'm gonna turn it off. So now power off isn't flashing anymore. It's, there's still an alarm, but I'm gonna clear that in a second. I first have to reset the bar feeder. Now that the bar feeder is running, I can hit reset on the machine. We'll go to the message. Now everything's disappeared. So now the machine is back up running just like normal that you could then start it from here. In fact, that's actually what I'm gonna do. So, so it already kicked back on the chip conveyor by itself. I'm gonna come over to the bar feeder and hit auto. Come over to the screen you know, go to my program if I need to, but I know this is all good. And then just start up. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset my part count to what it should be to run till tomorrow morning. So I had it at 52.50 reset, there we go. Alrighty, so these parts look good and I'm ready to let it run for the rest of the night. All right, one last quick tip for our pack today. I'm gonna leave and this screen does not need to be on, so what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna hit the program and cancel key at the same time. That just turns off that screen so it's not running.